Let us review meiosis for an um, organism that has a haploid number of two, which means there are two types of chromosomes and the organism would have a diploid number of four chromosomes. So this is a diploid organism and let's say I have one long chromosome and one short chromosome. This is the haploid number of two. There are two different types of chromosomes. And since this is a diploid organism, it will have two types of each chromosome. So there will be two of the long ones and two of the short ones one of the pairs of the homologous chromosomes comes from the father so it's paternal and the other comes from the mother and so it's the maternal homologous chromosome now during interface this, um, these chromosomes are going to be replicated. The DNA is going to be copied. And that's because if you don't copy the DNA, then uh, after mitosis or meiosis, the daughter cells will have half the amount of uh, DNA and therefore they would not function. So during interphase, we will end up with two The first homologous chromosome is going to get replicated to give you two sister chromosomes. Similarly, the other long chromosome, the maternal homolog, is also going to be replicated to give you two sister chromosomes. Then you would have two copies of the maternal homolog of the small chromosome and two copies of the paternal homolog of the short chromosome as well. During early prophase in meiosis 1 or early prophase 1, these chromosomes are going to form, uh, are going to condense and form what's known as a, a bivalent or a tetrad. So that'll look something like this. This is the centromere where the kinetic core um, um, uh, is going to form uh, to pull the chromosomes apart. This is one half of uh, the bivalent. This is a dyad and it comprises the um, sister chromatids which are the result of DNA replication. The other half of the bivalent is the dyad of the maternal chromosome, the maternal homolog, and we are going to have a similar bivalent for the small chromosomes as well. Now, during metaphase, these um, dyads are going to line up on the opposite sides of the metaphase plate. For example, you may have the paternal dyad of the long chromosome lining up here and the paternal dyad of the short chromosome lining up here, whereas the maternal homologs of the long chromosome line up on the bottom side and the maternal homologs of the short chromosomes line up on the bottom side as well. The crux 
of independent assortment, Mendel's law of independent assortment, that this is not the only way the chromosomes can line up across the metaphase plate. So the pattern on the top is possible, or one could have a different pattern in which you have the paternal homologue lining up below the metaphase plate and the maternal homologue of the, the long chromosome lining up on top, whereas the maternal homologue of the short chromosome still lines up at the bottom and the paternal homologue of the short chromosome still lines up at the top. If you stop here and just stare at this for a moment, you will realize that these are the only two possibilities and that these two possibilities are um, equally likely. Now, um, another way to put this is that the first chromosome chooses to assort itself into gametes or to assort itself on either side of the metaphase plate independently of what the other chromosomes are doing. Whether it's the top alignment of chromosomes or it is the bottom alignment of chromosomes is a random event and the probability of uh, either arrangement is equal or half. Next, let us complete meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 to see what kind of gametes we will get. So, in, in, in the arrangement at the top, um, at the end of meiosis 1 after cytokinesis, we can have two types of daughter cells. In one, we would have the two sister chromatids of the long chromosome and the two sister chromatids of the short chromosome, both the paternal homologs. And the other daughter cell will have the two sister chromatids of the long maternal chromosome and the two sister chromatids of the short maternal chromosome as well. On the other hand, if the um, dyads had lined up the other way, then we would get the maternal homologue, the two sister chromatids of the maternal homologue of the long chromosome with the paternal homologue of the short chromosome and we would get the paternal homologue of the long chromosome along with the maternal homologue of the short chromosome. And when these cells, these products of meiosis 1 undergo meiosis 2, and I'm skipping all the steps of meiosis 2, and um, just, you know, um, visualizing the final result, when the sister chromatids have separated, we will end up with the following gametes. Either you will have both the paternal homologs of the long and short chromosome, and both the um, maternal homologs of the long and the short chromosome. On the other hand, if during meiosis 1, during metaphase 1, the chromosomes had lined up the other way, then we would end up with a gamete which has the maternal homolog of the long chromosome along with the paternal homolog of the short chromosome and another gamete which has the paternal homolog of the long chromosome along with the 
maternal homolog of the short chromosome. And um, if, if, if you recall, when you do meiosis with only one type of chromosome or haploid uh, number of one or n equals one, you can get two different types of gametes, one carrying the maternal homologue and the other carrying the paternal homologue. But now we get four different types of gametes and all four gametes are equally likely and therefore a quarter of uh, the gametes are of each type. Here we see one of the main consequences of independent assortment which is that increasing the number of types of chromosomes or increasing the haploid number increases the number of different types of gametes you an individual can produce. So what would happen if instead of a haploid number of two, we had a haploid number of three? And so uh, the next problem asks, how many different types of gametes will be produced by an organism that has a diploid number 2n equals 6 and therefore the haploid number n equals 3 and there are three types of chromosomes. I'm going to give them names for convenience so I'll have let's say chromosome 1, chromosome 2 and chromosome 3. Now, in order to compute the number of different types of gametes, I'm going to utilize a technique which will come in very handy later on in this course. And that technique is called branching diagrams. And it's very useful for uh, determining the number of different combinations um, of a uh, in a given situation. All right. So let's say I'm making a gamete, and I have to pick which um, uh, uh, ho homolog of chromosome one I'm going to put in this gamete. So the gamete could receive either the paternal homolog or the maternal homolog. Having assigned um, either the paternal or maternal homolog of chromosome one, we can go and do the same for chromosome two. And once again, um, the gamete could either receive the paternal homolog of chromosome two or the maternal homolog of uh, uh, chromosome two. However, the gamete is going to be dependent uh, different depending on which um, homologue of chromosome 1 it, it had received and we can represent this fact by drawing branches and therefore the gamete could have received the paternal homologue of the first chromosome and then receive the paternal homologue of the second chromosome or it could have received the paternal homologue of the first chromosome and the maternal homologue of the second chromosome and similarly the other two possibilities had you started with the maternal homologue of chromosome one and we can also write down the number of different possibilities and we can repeat this exercise for chromosome three by adding two branches to each leaf of this tree. And you could get the paternal chromosome of chromosome three or the maternal, um, paternal, maternal, paternal, maternal, paternal, maternal. And the, the number of possibilities now has increased to eight. 
So each um, branch of this tree, if we trace each branch of this tree, represents a particular type of gamete that you can produce. So for example, you could produce a gamete that receives the paternal homologs of all three chromosomes, or you could have a, a gamete where you receive the maternal homolog of chromosome 1, the paternal homolog of chromosome 2, and the maternal homolog of chromosome uh, 3. And you can count the different branches, and um, there are eight different branches. Therefore, the answer to this question is that the organism can produce eight different types of gametes. Now, if you pay attention, you will see that every time you add a chromosome, you double the number of types of gametes. And so this is basically a geometric series where with each additional chromosome, you increase the number of possibilities. And therefore, we can write a general formula number of gametes is 2 to the power n, where n is the haploid number or the number of different types of chromosomes. And one final thing to point out is that um, all these different types of gametes are equally likely. So if I asked, what is the probability of any one type of gamete? So let's say the probability of this one, this gamete, where you get the paternal homolog of all three chromosomes, that is going to be 1 over 8 because there are 8 different types of gametes that are produced and each gamete is equally likely it will give us a 1 8th chance of getting a particular gamete. Let's continue in this theme and ask how many different types of gametes are produced by humans. Humans have a haploid number of 23. We have 23 different types of chromosomes and we have a diploid number of 46. So each cell in our body has 46 chromosomes and so we can use that formula that we just wrote down and the number of gametes is going to be 2 to the power of 23, which is approximately 8 million different types of gametes. This large number of gametes that are produced by humans is one of the reasons why even though siblings have the same parents they are rarely identical or they're not the, they're not similar to each other and that's because independent assortment uh, generates a large variety of gametes and is a source of uh, genetic variation in a population <laughs>